if I want to find the equation of a tangent line, the crux of the issue is getting the slope. So we're going to farm out the definition of a slope to a function all its own. So definition, if I have a function, f of x, we're defined the derivative of f to be the function at the point x given by taking limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So what we're doing here is this function is going to take a point. What it's going to return is the slope of the tangent line if it exists. So whenever you hear the word derivative, the first thing you should think is slope of the tangent line. Let's take a look at an example. First example is going to be a straight line. My f of x is going to be equal to mx plus b. So what are we going to do? First, we're going to calculate f of x plus h. So that's m x plus h plus b. So remember, you want to keep your parentheses there. f of x is just going to be mx plus b. When I expand and collapse, we note that the only thing that will be left over will be mh. So if I take mh over h, I'm just going to be left with m. Take the limit. You're taking the limit of a constant. So it's just going to be the constant m. And then that's our answer. What does this say? If I have a straight line with slope m, the best fitting line, the tangent line, is just going to be the line itself. So the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the original line. Try another example. I want to look at the function f of x equal to x squared. So our f of x plus h is going to be x plus h squared, which is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. f of x is just going to be x squared. So when I take the difference, what's left over? 2xh plus h squared. I divide by h. That's going to give me 2x plus h. And then when I take the limit as h goes down to 0, I'm just going to be left with 2x. So if you note here, unlike our last example, as I change my point x, the slope of the tangent line is going to change. And that makes sense if you look at the picture. If I have a parabola and draw in the best fitting lines at a whole bunch of different points, you'll note that the slopes of all those lines are going to vary. All right. One thing to note, OK, the derivative, the notation is going to vary a lot on the context and on the source that you're using. So you'll see things like a capital D sub x of f. You'll see df over dx, which is what we call the Leibniz notation. And if you also have floating around y equal to f of x, you'll also see y prime and dy over dx. So you'll need to be careful of that. Just remember, these are all giving us the same thing, the slope of the tangent line. For a slightly different example, let's take a look at f of x equal to square root of x. Then f of x plus h is square root of x plus h. f of x is square root of x. So our delta y is going to be radical x plus h minus radical x. So I'll take that limit of that gadget over h. Note, if I put 0 in, I get 0 over 0. So it's an indeterminate form. So we're going to use our old trick, multiply top and bottom by radical x plus h plus radical x over itself. When I do that, the top is going to collapse down to an h. So the h's are going to cancel, leaving me with 1 over radical x plus h plus radical x. We let h go down to 0, and I have 1 over 2 radical x. What's interesting about this example, if you note, we're not going to have a derivative at every point. Okay, first off, you won't have it at the negative since it's not in the domain anyway. But if you look at 0, where our function is perfectly well defined, we have f of 0 equal to 0, square root of 0 is 0. Our derivative is going to be it does not exist since we're dividing by 0. If you go look at the graph, What's happening is we're getting a vertical tangent line. All right, a vertical tangent line is just fine. Tangent line just says you want to find the best fitting line to your graph. The only catch here is this is not very useful if I want to say approximate 0.1 off the tangent line from 0. Well, if I put 0.1 into the equation x equals 0, which is our tangent line, that's the vertical line through 0, that's going to give me 0.1 equals 0, which is nonsense, which means there's no way you can approximate values off a vertical tangent line. So that's a little drawback. Okay, 
let's do a little bit of abstract nonsense. So what do we want to do? The idea is, if you noted before, I said continuity is somehow stepped down from this notion of having derivatives, having tangent lines. So let's make that a little bit more concrete. First, I want a definition. Let's say our function f is differentiable at a point x0 if the derivative of f is defined at x0. Okay, and then if we're talking about an interval, we just say f is differentiable if it's defined, if the f prime is defined at each of the points in your domain. All right, theorem. If f is differentiable at x0, then f is going to be continuous at x0. Let's recall what we need to have continuity. All right, three things. First thing is, your function has to be defined at the point x0. So note, if I'm talking about the derivative of f at x0, well, it has to be defined there because it's part of the definition of the secant line. When I talk about the secant lines to get the slope of the tangent line, we're basing all of them off of the point x0 comma of f of x0. So it's implicit that we're defined at that point. Next, we want to see that the limit as x goes to x0 of f of x exists. So that's what we're going to have to show. And then once I have that limit, I need to show that it's actually equal to the value of the point. So recall this is just saying your best fitting point is actually a point on your graph. Now, what do we want to show? To show continuous, I need to show that the limit as x goes to x0 of f of x is equal to f of x0. I'm going to need to massage what we're trying to show here a little bit so that I can link it up to differentiability at x0. First step is to push the f of x0 to the other side. So I'm looking at limit as x goes to x0 of f of x minus f of x0 is equal to 0. That's a perfectly legal operation. Next, we want to change where the limit goes. So I would rather have limit h goes to 0 of f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 equal to 0, and that's perfectly fine also. So now, let's see, we want to show that statement there. That's what I want to show. So if you notice, I write that out. I can multiply that statement by 1, h over h. What are we going to do? The h that's in the bottom, I'm going to slide it over. If you notice, that limit, that difference in the top over h, is exactly the definition of differentiable at x0. The h by itself, if I take the limit as h goes to 0, is going to go to 0. Since both of those limits exist, that means we could take the limit of each thing one at a time and then multiply afterwards. Now note, because I have differentiable, that limit exists and it's not equal to, it's not an infinite limit. It's going to be a number. So I have a number times 0, so that means what's coming out is going to be equal to 0, and that's exactly what we're trying to show. So if I have differentiable at x0, I have continuous at x0. So what did we just buy? If f is differentiable, it's continuous. So that means, if say I have f differentiable at an interval, so meaning it has a derivative at every point, then that's going to say I can draw the graph of my function without lifting my pen up. Also, if I have two points that are very close to each other and I apply my function, then the values of those two points are also going to be very close to each other. So another way to think of continuity. All right. So one thing we could try to hope for, if I have continuous, is that going to mean that I always have differentiable? Okay, does continuous always mean I have a tangent line? Well, no. What can go wrong? Let's take a look at the graph of absolute value of x. If I take a look at what's happening at x equals 0, if you try to fit a tangent line to that, well, you'll note that there's actually two best fitting lines here the line y equals x and the line y equals minus x. But that's actually a bad thing. If I can't get them to agree from both sides, then there's no best fitting line. I may have a best fitting line on each side, but because of the way we have it defined, our derivative, that's going to be a limit from both sides. So that's going to give us a problem. And we have to say that f prime at 0 is undefined. 
Okay, aside from the picture, we could just try to take the limit. And what you'll notice is, just put things into the definition. If I take the limit on the left side, so we're going to zero from the left, so there the function's equal to minus x. So we put it into our gadget. I'll have minus in parentheses, x plus h, minus a minus x. That's going to collapse to a minus h over h, which gives me a minus 1. If I take the limit on the right, so that's h going to 0 from the right, that's going to give me x plus h minus x over h, which is going to give me h over h, which gives me a 1. So if I go from the left, I have a minus 1. I go from the right, I have a 1. They're not going to agree, so that limit does not exist, which means the function's undefined. Note that that agrees with our graph. We could have guessed by looking the slope on the left side is going to be minus 1 because that's a straight line with slope minus 1. And on the right, it's a straight line with slope equal to 1.